this season for me, it's a new place, a new boat with new department heads. The best thing to do is feed them alcohol. I've never hit anything in my career, ever. Bring me a naked bomb and bring it to me now. Challenge accepted. <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. It's the Below Deck Med Edition. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-captain, it's the one and only Teresa. Ahoy, everyone. How's oh. everyone doing? Ahoy, matey. I'm How's doing very well. How's everyone doing? How you doing? I'm doing pretty okay. You know why I'm doing okay? Why? Ooh, the happy hours tomorrow. The, it's only a day away. Oh, man. If you guys <laughs> are listening to this on Wednesday, then yeah, our Patreon happy hour is tomorrow. Ooh. Thursday, August 25th, and it's not too late to join, to join the Patreon or to join the happy hour. You kind of need to join one to join you the other. You need to join the Patreon to join the happy hour. The yes. happy hour is going down tomorrow night, Thursday night, August 25th, 9 p.m. Eastern time, and it's open to all our patrons. It's open to all our friends over there on Patreon mm-hmm. from the Friends with Benefit level. That's Yes. This is one of the benefits, guys, is you get to hang out and drink with us all the way up to the family affair level and everything in between. So you guys have heard us talk about it a lot. The The time is finally come. It is almost here. The time has come. So don't miss out on that. If you are a patron, don't forget, set your calendar. And if you're not a patron, it's not too late to join. You'll get a link when the time is near. So even if you, if you sign up now, you're not going to get a link immediately. You'll get a link. All you guys will get links when the time is near. Are we going to post the links on Patreon or? Yeah, we'll post it on Patreon and then that'll send an email out to our friends and we'll go from there. Sweet. Cool. So that is happening tomorrow. I'm so excited. Woo-hoo! I could use a drink and I could use a chat. Oh, yeah. And we'll get both. And so patreon.com slash married to reality. You know what's over there. Check it out if you haven't. Also check out the Instagram at Married to Reality Pod, okay? There are reels, there are memes, we're breaking news, you're messaging us, Teresa's chatting with you, all good things at Married to Reality Pod on Instagram. All good things, and John is especially proud of his reels, guys. They are the so real check them out. deal. Seal. No, just, there's no seal. <laughs> there are no seals. They are the real deal. If there were going to be any seals in the shows we covered... It would be this show. It would be Below Deck. True, but there are no seals in the Mediterranean Sea. Is that, as far as I know. Is that true? I don't know, but I've never I thought heard you're of the seal expert. You're the resident seal expert over here. Well, I know all about the seals around, the, around America. Okay. All right. right. Not bragging. North okay. and south. Yeah. But. I would say maps would be our second most likely seal spotting show because... San Diego. Oh, I think maps is our number one huh? seal spotting show. Huh? There you go. Because of San Diego. San Diego. Seal Diego. Um, <laughs> so, yes, get over there on that Instagram. And also make sure you're following the podcast. Yes, the one you're listening to right now. You might be listening to it and you check in from time to time. What's most important is that you follow it so you don't have to do any checking. You don't have to remember, oh, it's Wednesday, below deck drops. Oh, it's Monday, 90 day drops. You follow the podcast. You get the shows right to your device as soon as they drop. Here's how easy it is to follow. You just look down, you smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hot as the apple dessert. Because that looked really good. That, that was, was almost molecular gastronomy. It, ha- it had nothing to do with an apple, but it looked like a banged up, banged up apple. Why did it look banged up? Because you could tell it wasn't a real apple. Well, it looked like a candy apple, if anything. Well, yes. It was a little out of shape. But it looked yeah. delicious. I think you're like going back on your smash like it's hot. Oh, it looked hot. <laughs> but like it looked kind of banged up too. <laughs> I'm just being honest with our friends. It was fun. It, it was a fun dessert. Yes. I have thoughts on Dave's culinary prowess, his culinary skills. Not even his culinary, but like what he's delivering, I have thoughts on. Okay. Aside from him as a human, I feel like he's dropping the ball or maybe we're not seeing it because... Coming off Chef Marcos, mm-hmm. he was delivering eight to ten dishes a charter, it felt like. A meal. Yeah. It seems like Dave goes, because here's how I note take. I go, okay, here we go. First course. Oh, octopus. Second course. 
Oh, dessert? <laughs> right? Maybe yeah. they don't show it all. They did for sailing. Yeah, it was like mm. first course, second course, third course. And now Maybe it's- because just Marcos was the bomb. But if I'm paying, again, if I'm going to pay this amount of money, you got to give me more than, they're, they're not, there's not a salad course. There's not a soup course. You're just showing me an octopus that you cooked three times. Instead of cooking the octopus three times, how about you cook the octopus once and you cook two other things? Well, uh, all I'm saying is that maybe they don't show it on TV. Maybe it's just there are other things to show us. There's not. Show, show me them food. That's what I, that's what impresses me the most a lot of this. Time. I don't need stop showing me the boat swaying back and forth. We know you're on the sea. That's natural. It's going to happen whether you're in a kayak or you're on home. The mega ship, show me something that's not going to happen, which is this delicious hopefully four or five course meal. True. Okay? Uh, these episodes are already 50 plus minutes long. They sure are. So are they, guys, call in. How long are these episodes when you watch live on Bravo? Because we watch on the Bravo app. Yeah. And so we don't know how long they are. There must be the on same live television. Length. But then it would go over an hour because then there'd be no time for commercials. It's a 57. 50- the commercials are part of it. Do you think they're part of this 57 yeah. minutes? Yeah. Oh, that could be. Anyway. Smash it like it's as hot as that candy apple dessert because that was that was fun. That was fun. And last but not least, if you haven't left a review, you guys know we're suckers for a good review. Yes, so if, and we read hmm. them on the main pod on Mondays. We read the five star reviews on the main pod Monday night. You will have your name in lights. No, you will not. But we will say your name. We will say your handle, and we will yes. read your review. And it's a lot of fun. And so thank you for all those who have left reviews, and thank you. If you're going to leave a review. If yeah, you're, thank you. Thank you regardless. Just thank you for listening. We just thank you guys really, because thanks, you guys have the bomb. For, thanks for being here. You guys have the bomb. Thanks for listening. We love you guys. All right. All right. Whoa. Jumping the gun over here. Yeah, because you usually steal my segment. <laughs> so no, go ahead. All right. Introduce your favorite segment. Well, I'm excited because this is my favorite segment, Teresa. Thank you very much. You are coming off a hot outfits the segment. Oh, that's right. Coming up a hot outfits the segment from 98. Last, Hello, part one. Last week, yes. So now, I hate to say it, but this is this is still my favorite segment, even compared to outfits the segment. <gasps> okay, <gasps> just because it's, uh, I find it a little more creative. I like the creative exercise. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, well, welcome to the show. Where have you been? If you do know what we're talking about, it is my favorite segment. And Teresa's, she's reluctant to say, but I think it's her favorite segment too. <laughs> It is my favorite segment. <laughs> it is boat name this segment, okay? Boat name this home segment. is a terrible name. We've said Horrible. it. Horrible. We've said it seven episodes in a row now. Home is a terrible name. We're trying to help them out. We're trying to help these folks out by giving them a better name by watching the episode and saying, you know what? Here's what happened. I think this is more appropriate for your boat. We do it every episode. We're not stopping now. Here we go. Boat name this segment for season seven, episode seven. Ladies first. All right. My number one boat name for episode seven is Damn Dolphin. Oh, <laughs> is that like a damn, Daniel? Yes. Back at it again with the white vans. <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I can see why you would pick up on that. Damn Dolphin. Yeah. Back at it again, being in the way of this boat. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Damn All dolphin right, doesn't you need go. much you explanation. Go. All right. Let's start slow. Let's start slow. Um, so there was a Studio 54 themed party. Classic. Uh, classic. And I kind of thought it was a weak party. I thought it was a little slow, a little mundane. It doesn't was, even, didn't even look like a disco party. That was a bunch right? of middle-aged women sitting around a table and maybe there was a light or two flashing. Yeah. So my first boat name. Studio 50 Snore. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Studio 50 Snore. I like it. I like it. That is my first boat name. My second boat name of this episode is, you know the movie Camp Rock? I've never seen it, but I've heard of it. With the Jonas Brothers and Demi Lovato. I'm familiar, yeah. Okay, okay. My (laughs) second boat name is... Oh, boy. Boat Rock. Uh, okay, so <laughs> because the boat was wrong. I know this is why we need to. This is why we need to <laughs> workshop this together, Teresa. Because I could have, I I didn't think of this on my own. I needed your your prompt 
to get me there. But can I tell you what would be the best name of the season so far? With our powers combined. Okay. Yacht Rock. Oh. Because Yacht Rock is the new genre that is sweeping the radio waves. Really? You, oh, you've never heard of Yacht no. Rock. So you're just kind of trying to appease me by being like, oh, great. Yacht Rock. It's a style of music. Really? No. Yeah. Like, is it like a music that they play on the boats? Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think John Mayer's Sob Rock came from? I think it's a play on Yacht Rock. Oh, I thought it's because he was sad. Well, I think there's that too, but just the genre of something rock. Oh. Yacht, yacht rock. Oh. I and this is a know yacht. That. Yacht rock is a great, is. great name for but a boat. But also boat rock. Okay. Boat All rock. Right. All right. Camp rock. Okay. All right. Boat rock. It's okay. 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 Right. Okay. Here you show me your name. Here we go. Where do I want to go next? I have one that you're not going to understand. Should I save that for last? Probably. All right. So <laughs> the boat's name is Home. Mm-hmm. We hate it. But there's also another another play on that word, okay? Because we see Dave and Natasha. We see Natasha talking to her ex. And mm-hmm. we see Dave trying to get in between that. And he actually did get in between that, right? She cheated on her yeah. ex. Okay. The boat home went straight into a buoy on this episode. And Dave is trying to get in between that relationship. This second boat name... Home wrecker. Oh, that's pretty good. Pretty good after pretty I explained good. it. It's, yeah, it was a long explanation. I didn't worth, even know where you're going with this. Worth but the wait, I would say. Okay, okay. I mean, it's uh, not as good as Bulldog, but sure. All right. No, it was good. It was good. Number I'll three. I'll give you some credit. Okay. You have a third? Number th- yeah. I'm just a, a, so presumptuous now that we have three names. It's I know, I know. Well, this episode was so tough for me. I couldn't really come up with anything great. Okay. I mean, damn, Dolphin's good. <laughs> but <laughs> Yacht Rock could be your third, but okay. Okay, okay. My third name of this episode is You ready? I'm so ready. <laughs> Hold on, let me sit down. If you guys don't know, I stand while we podcast. That's not true. No, he's lying. I'm okay. Sitting. Walkie, no talkie. Because ah, the walkie talkie was broken. That's pretty good. Right? Right? Yeah. Right? All right, cool. I also had two teeth, but who would get on that boat? Uh, I would get on two teeth before I got on boat rock. Please. Okay. <laughs> um, my last name. Mm-hmm. Right? We know Courtney. She is pulling double duty over here. She's working as a decky. She's working interior. She's doing it all. Mm-hmm. Okay. My third boat name, Full Court Press. Yeah, I don't get it. She doesn't get it. A Full Court Press. So Court, obviously, Courtney. Court is a... Oh. Nickname for recording. Full court press. When you do a full court press, it's usually in sports. It's in basketball. You're increasing your effort. You're giving the full court press because you want to win. You're, ah. go, you're going hard. And court, Courtney, she's going hard. She's giving the full court press. Uh, okay. okay. All right. Okay. I get it. I get it now. Let's, I'm sure about yeah. seven other people got it too. So it's okay. <laughs> All right. Where is it? Studio 50 Snore. I think that's your <laughs> I winner. Ended, I should have ended that's with that That's your one. winner. Ah. What's my winner? Is it Damn Dolphin or Walking Out Talkie? Uh, I think Boat Rock. <laughs> you hate Boat Rock. I hate it. If you said Yacht <laughs> Rock, I would have dropped the mic and walked out of here and said, well, you won. But it's not a yacht, so. Excuse me? It's a boat. It is an absolute yacht. That's, really? It's a super yacht. It doesn't have that... Think that's a sailing yacht, Teresa. Ah, oh, Teresa, so you can we, be a yak without sailing. Most are what? most most yachts don't sail. Get out of here. Oh, we have a lot of studying to do before this next episode. What? Oh, yeah, no, yes. you, you are think? either a sailing yacht or, or if you're not, boat? you're a boat. No, well, you first can of be all, a ship if you're big. Oh, Teresa. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Teresa. <laughs> I hope no? we don't have any sailors listening. Are you kidding me? Are you joking with me? I have really not. What do you think Titanic was? A, boat? a ship. Okay. You just That's said what you... I said. If you're a big, you are a ship. And what do you think a home is? It's a boat. No. It's a yacht. It's a, no. super, it's a super yacht. No, it's a boat. Well, okay. You, you can think whatever it's you want. It's a super boat. No. Okay. Can we move on? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll talk offline. We'll okay, talk we sure will. Oh, we sure will, Teresa. Let's talk about this episode right now, though. Right here, right now. Season 7, 
episode seven, seven and seven. Yes, and it is right before damn dolphin hit the dolphin. Yes, and before yacht yacht rock, <laughs> and before Studio Fifty snore. Uh, right in the why? middle of Home Wrecker. This is right in the middle of Home Wrecker. And it's because walking or talking. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and Courtney is still not in the full court press yet. But here we go, <laughs> picking up where we left off. Yes, hitting the buoy, Sandy hitting the buoy. And here's the main takeaway that I had because we pick up where we left off. So we got to kind of see things and, and re-see things and reassess. It seems like there was nothing wrong with Storm's radio. It was more user error because last episode I was going, maybe his radio was broken. Oh, yeah. But no, because he was able to eventually figure it out. Mm. He was hearing Sandy through it and then Sandy was hearing him through it. But just on this delay... And so, unfortunately, user error. Yeah. It, it, we can't blame it on technology. Walkie no talkie. Walkie no talkie. Fortunately, it was just a little boop, though. This was a little boop. Boop. It was, and I'm sure these things, these dolphins are meant to be hit. Yeah. Right. It's not ideal. You don't want to do it, but it's meant, they're, they're meant to make contact. So it wasn't that bad. Yes. Nobody was freaking out. Sandy wasn't freaking out. No one... On the crew is freaking out. So I think it was, all right, I wish it didn't happen, but it's it's not the end of the yeah, world. Yeah, the previews looked bad. The previews looked like someone's going to get fired. Yeah. And because Reagan did get fired, yes. I think tensions are higher going, oh, on Sandy's boat, you make one mistake, yeah. you're gone. Well, for Reagan, that was the final mistake. Sure. Like for Reagan, that was the, what do you call it? Final straw. The nail on the coffin. Nail on the coffin. That was the, her because she's she's made so many mistakes and Sandy talked to her. Yeah. That hitting the buoy was just like, that's it. But still, we made contact and then Sandy calls Storm to the bridge and we're all going, how's mm -hmm. this conversation going to go? And she said, you did well. And here's what I loved. Sandy says, you did well. Storm, he could have just been like, thanks. But he takes immediate ownership for what he did. And he's like, no, 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 no. I, I understand where I went wrong. I was pressing the radio too early. And I just loved that. Yeah. He took it on himself. Sandy didn't say, oh, we have a lot to work on. Oh, Storm, sit down. We need to talk. She said, you did well. And he goes, nah, I don't, yeah. I don't need that. I, I messed up and I'll own it. Yeah, no, that's cute. But then Sandy was like, yeah, you know what? Like, we didn't go over the walkie-talkie. What are you talking about? They all used the walkie-talkie. I think they, I think it's a different configuration, though. Because if you see them in the cabins and in the interior, they have earpieces. Mm. And so I think it's maybe a different setup. This was a handheld. Oh. And so they probably didn't go over how to use this configuration. Mm. I think that was great of Sandy because that's yeah. big of Sandy. So now everyone's taking ownership. That's good leadership. And in, as she said, it's a teachable moment. Yeah, because she, she said he's a provisional bosun and this was a teachable moment. So yeah. it's all good. She goes like, damn dolphin. I haven't hit anything <laughs> ever. And now it's been two times since this charter season began. Yeah. And at that point, a good leader would look at themselves and go, all right. We've now hit twice. Maybe it's not just the other people involved. Maybe it starts at the top. Maybe it starts with me. And that's when she goes, it's okay. We didn't go over this. So she's taking ownership because I think she's realizing yeah. the common denominator is her as the captain. At well, the end of the she, day. She at, cannot do it on her own. Like no, she but, needs people to help her call the distances. But at the end of the day, everything lands on the captain. She is in charge. She is the one with the final say. So she is True. the one that is responsible for everyone's safety on that boat. She is responsible for the safety of that boat. Everything falls on her at the end of the day. So I think it's good that she goes, you know what? Now it's happened twice. Let, let me take some personal responsibility for this too. True. Which she did. Yeah. And I was happy Sandy could do that. Yeah, Sandy is a good captain. We like, we like Captain Sandy. Yes. Okay. Then we see Natasha, who is still texting her ex. Yeah, and it's I'm like, I love you. I love you too. The, this is so, forget Dave. Just the fact that you're on the job and you're spending this much time texting your ex, 
That would rub me the wrong way. It's like a... Uh, Reagan, but yeah. she's texting instead of smoking. Right. Natasha's vice is texting her ex, not yeah. smoking cigarettes. And it's incessant. It doesn't end. And he's, well, I guess he's sending most of the messages, or at least the ones we see. Yeah. I want to work. I want this to work so bad. I love you. I fancy you. You're my best. You're my best mate. Right. And she's reading them. I don't know yeah. if she's responding. I, I imagine she's responding. And Dave is right over her shoulder, Mm -hmm. which scares me because Dave seems like the guy who would sneak a peek. Yes, Dave also seems like you blow at him. He's going to fall apart at this point. He's very fragile. Very fragile. He looks fragile and he, I'm sure he is because, and he says it too. He's like, I still have feelings for her. I'm still in love with her. Homewrecker. He's like, yeah, like I love being around her, which is like, Creepy. No, it's no, it's not creepy. It's fine. I mean, they had a relationship. Well, yeah, but you need to like, I guess, being honest and admitting it is one thing, but just keep it to yourself and try to move on. Like saying yeah. it out loud makes it very real. It makes it like, are you really okay with this? Because I almost feel like he thinks that all right, well, things will slow down. We'll work together again, and maybe this whole thing starts over. Yeah, I don't mind him feeling that way it's his feelings he can't help it sure maybe don't express it so much that'll help you move on and make others feel more comfortable around you what bothers me and what creeps me out is we saw later in the episode when they get back from the bar he's like standing in his doorway kind of spying on her oh yeah there's a little bit of a stalker vibe with him and that's what creeps me out you know what could have been a good boat name Hmm. High hopes. Yacht, yacht rock. <laughs> High hopes. High hopes. Yeah, not bad. Right? right? Not bad. Better right. than boat rock. Stop it. Okay. Stop it. Okay. All right. Anyway. If I knew this was a yacht, I would say yacht rock. There you go. I'm serious. Uh, I yeah. already thought it was a boat. Yeah. And I would have, we should, every season we should come up with an award and we should have the, the our listeners, our friends vote on, they're just going to vote for you. They like you more. But I, was gonna I say, don't think they do. Vote on the best name of the season. Because we are a team. We're a team. That's true. Forget the awards. All right. Meanwhile, Kyle and Natalia are in a bit of a bicker. Yes. And Okay. I think this was a little confusing because for some reason, I was having a hard time understanding them. But... What I think the fight was about was about the responsibilities. Mm-hmm. Kyle is still in pain. His teeth are still hurting, right? Let's not so he that. wanted to do laundry. He wanted to stay inside. And Natalia's kind of saying, no, like you haven't even done any service yet. Like I'm doing this now. Damn it. And he's mad I because he's of, like, ah. I just thought of a great boat name. What? Instead of, because you were saying, what did you say? Two, two teeth? Yeah. Two teeth? Instead of tea pain, teeth pain. Oh, that's a great one. Damn. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, Pretty okay. Good. Anyways. No more boat names. Okay, no more boat names. Sorry. But yeah, he's in he's in pain. And so you're right. They're talking about roles and pulling their own weight or not pulling their own weight. And Kyle doesn't want to be in front of the guests. Yes. Because he's in so much pain. So he wants to do what Natalia is doing, which is housekeeping, mm-hmm. a little more behind the scenes. And it just turns into this argument out of nowhere, it seemed like to me. Yes, yes. But I think they can work it out. And Natalia was saying, like, I don't, I've never worked with you before. I don't know what offends you. Like, I'm, you know. So they kind of get into this argument. I think it's fine. Natasha walks in and then turns around and says, I'll come back when you guys chat it out. Which yeah. on one hand, I'm like, okay, well, that's good. But on the other hand, I'm like, you are the boss. Exactly. You can say, like, hey, guys, like, this is silly. And you can literally say, like, Natalia, if he's in pain, he doesn't want to be in front of the guests, let him do the laundry and then you do the service. It's a good point because it wasn't a personal argument. It was a professional argument. Yeah. And as the leader, as yeah. the chiefs do, yeah, she should get out there and delegate and make those decisions. Yes. And then no one has any hard feelings of. But what I think she did is because Natasha, I mean, Natalia got mad at her over the last time when she wanted to be in service right. and then she asked her to do housekeeping because Courtney was helping and she just didn't know where things are. So I think now she's like, you know what? I'm not getting in the middle of this anything, anything 
they can figure it out. Like they are both on the same level. It's not like one is second, one is third. Yeah. They can talk it through. And that's why it's important as a leader to stay on good terms with those you are leading. Yes. Because you're right. She should have stepped in here and made a call, but because she's kind of fractured this relationship with Natalia now, Mm -hmm. she can't really do her job to the best of her ability. So you got to stay on good terms. And I think it would have made a big difference here. But okay, moving on from that, be ready to do water sports. Yeah, water sports. They're quick. This time, everything's in the water. You see these, like, the trampolines in the water, all the toys. Yep. Then they're putting the jet skis in the water. And Courtney has experience with doing that. So she jumps in. She helps Storm doing all that stuff, swims around the boat, gets on the jet ski. So I think this was really good. And when it comes to Storm and his ta- first time being a bosun, yeah, good job on the boat. I mean, on the toys, finally. Yeah, everyone snapped into action, did their job. Storm gave a little banana boat ride. I the call guests. it the banana boat too. It is called the banana boat, I, right? I think this is a variation. Have you ever done it? Yeah. I've done it once in yes, Croatia. Yes, I've been on vacation. And it was shaped as a banana. Exactly. And it was yellow. It was a banana exactly. boat. I know. Yeah, this was some modification of a banana yeah. boat. Of what, maybe this was like a, it wasn't a ripe banana because it was not your classic banana boat. But yeah, it was that long tubular yeah. inflatable that gets Did pulled. Did you fall? No, I can, I can ride an inflatable, Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it, it was a fun day in the water. Yeah. Until Sandy sees some unexpected weather coming. The winds start to pick up. And so then she radios to get everyone out of the water, get the toys out of the water. And I think you were kind of mentioning how Courtney was able to snap into action, get the jet skis back on the boat. Because apparently it's not that easy. You have to like hook the jet ski and then the crane has to lift it back on the board. And apparently when she did it last time, the crane hit her in the face. Yeah. But all good this time. Good. Yeah. And I was happy for her because she's she's killing it. She's doing a good yeah. job. And all she wanted to do since she got on the boat was make a good first impression as a decky. Yes. But she kept getting put on mm-hmm. interior. And finally, Sandy got to see, oh, wow, Courtney is really able to handle herself on deck. Yeah. And you would think that would lead her to spend more time on the deck, but we're going to see her. Back in black. Yeah, well. ACDC doing service. It's because Kyle is still in pain, but hopefully, well, hopefully we know they'll help him soon. But two teeth. Teeth pain. Two teeth. Teeth pain. But, ugh, oh, uh-oh. Now yeah. we start hearing the, the eh, alarm. Eh, eh, eh. The stabilizers are off once again. And this is something we learned last season during Sailing Yacht, I think. The stabilizers went... And it was because of the cooling. Yes. It was uh, the AC. Yeah. So Sandy's trying to call Carlos, the engineer. And remember, we, remember Carlos? I forgot about him. We keep forgetting him. about them. And I think they, they do a lot of the behind the scenes when yes. it comes to these things. Right? Yeah, they're, they're professionals. So it's almost like, yes, yeah, like she has this security blanket on board besides these deckies, right? And uh, right. inside crew. Carlos is not there to take tequila shots. No, Carlos is there to work. And so... Once again, they found out it's because of the AC. So Sandy's telling everyone, keep the door closed. Yeah. Because when you keep it open, the heat goes inside and the AC goes nuts. And oh, well. And you see what happens. Everything was falling once again. Broken plates. One of the guests fell. She went down hard, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> there yeah. wasn't much guest drama. And that's what we always say on the episode. You either get crew drama or you yeah. get guest drama. This charter was heavily crew drama. Mm-hmm, there was mm-hmm. really nothing to do with the These guests. These guests were good. They yeah, were just like living their best lives. They were chill. And, and so we get back to port and it's Studio 50 Snore. Well, let's first talk about the docking because now they're going back to port. They yeah. have to get in between the dolphins, but it's pitch black. Yeah, it was a lot to do about nothing. That's kind of why I skipped over. They nailed it. They, they nailed it. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying like... You hit the dolphins twice yeah. during a daylight. Now you're doing this yeah. in the dark. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. It, it was dark. The pressure was on from hitting the dolphins twice before. But 
Storm does a great job. He's mm-hmm. delegating tasks. He's calling distances. He's working his radio like a morning DJ. So <laughs> they make it through. It's all it's all good. Everyone worked together. They did a perfect docking in my book. Mm-hmm. If I had to give him a grade, I yeah, would that was a, great. A, Sandy said it was amazing. Amazing docking. So kudos all around to everyone. We're back at port, which I think is the perfect time to take a break. Let's do it. Okay, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. It'll be Studio 50. Snore. Snore. All right. We'll be back in a second. And we're back. Uh, hoi, Jonathan. Oh, hoi, Teresa. I almost said hello. Who am I? I don't know who what that I? was. I don't know what that was. I was a hoi. A hoi, a hoi. A hoi, Jonathan. A hoi, Teresa. A hoi, everyone. Are. We we're are back. back. We are. And we are back. all right. They're prepping for the Studio 54 B-Day party. And we see Kyle is still in pain. Yeah, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. So Courtney needs to step in again. Yeah. Sandy gets word of Kyle's pain and so goes to check on him. Dr. Sandy, Therese, if you remember my name. Oh, from, yeah. How could you forget? You were I sure do. <laughs> but yeah, she goes and check on Kyle and calls the hospital. Yeah. And arranges for Kyle to go in because he cannot take it anymore, right? Yes, exactly. He needs to go see somebody. Yes. That. So, so Courtney's yes. going to be a team player. Not that she wants to do interior work, but she's like, you know what, I'll do it. Um, I know how to do it. I'm here to help. So she's helping the interior crew. And then we see this weird moment that Storm is like walking up the stairs and pops a balloon with his hat. We had how to, do you pop a balloon with your hat? We had to rewind it multiple times. Because John is like, it was a disco ball. Well, the way it shattered, it like, I don't know if there was confetti yeah. inside it or glitter or something, but he hits it and it was like, like it sounded like a crash, yeah. but it was a pop. And then stuff fell and I went, oh man, Studio 50 snore. Maybe there's disco balls. Did he just walk headfirst into a disco ball? But it was a balloon. It was a balloon. How do you pop a balloon with your hat? It must have been super. Fr- Maybe he has like, like yeah, a yeah, fragile yeah. balloon. Yeah, I was gonna say, does he like gel his hair and spiky? But he's I not. I don't he's, think so. He's like no, a he's like, head. yeah, he's basically he has no but, hair. I don't know, but it popped. It did pop. I was like, holy <laughs> shit! And he's like, woo, woo. Yeah, <laughs> but okay. So the guests sit down for dinner. They recognize Courtney pulling double duty. They're like, wait, what? Weren't you on deck and now yeah, you're on service? Yeah, they're like, you're great in the water, girlfriend. So we have to talk about this. I don't know if you picked up on it, but the guests are sitting there at the table talking about their Thanksgiving plans. Yes. They're going to Cabo. Uh Uh-huh. You're going to Mexico for the most American holiday? I mean, if you have the money, why not? That just seems sacrilegious to go to another country to celebrate Thanksgiving. I guess that's what the pilgrims did. Well, I guess. <laughs> but, <laughs> they didn't go to Mexico. But. Right, but the, the, I was like, huh? Is Did they even have, you, are they going to have a turkey there? That's what I'm saying. Are you going to have turkey tacos? Is this is this what rich people do? Like go on vacation? I to love another, Thanksgiving. In but America. But if your family didn't celebrate it the way they do, I would take it as a travel time. Because you, you get time off, I would like go somewhere. It was so expensive to travel over Thanksgiving. That's yes, not the, that's the last is. time you want to travel if you can help it. But I guess they have the money. doesn't matter. But I was just like, really? Mexico? I, so, well, I don't think a lot of people go to Mexico over Thanksgiving. So Yeah, well, I wouldn't or, imagine. <laughs> not a lot of Americans. I don't know. But let's, listen, they're going to Cabo. They're going to go to Cabo. Yeah. Good for them. Good for them. But before that, let's talk about this this dinner. I wrote first course, only course, really. It was an octopus. It was an octopus cooked three times. It was a dish. What do you mean cooked three times? Uh, Dave said he brought it out. He goes, this is morning glory. It's octopus cooked three times. So it was a dish inspired by Natasha. That's how in love. That's how lovesick this guy is. He's like, oh, she, she's recommended it. So, okay, I'll do whatever she says. And here's morning glory. My my muse, Natasha, inspired this. Oh, my this. gosh. Yeah, he's too much. But then we see the apple sitting around this mi- mini tree that's in the middle. Mm. And so he comes back and they kind of started putting the apples in front of the guests. And yes. they're loving it. Yes. And they've said they're very heavy. And you could tell they're like almost like a fudge or like a caramel or something. Once they cut them in the half, yeah. you could tell they're like very, very heavy. It's a chocolate ganache. Yeah. Which if you're familiar with ganache, 
glaze. It's like a glaze or a yeah. sauce. And so it's banana and caramel inside. Yeah. It yum, looked nice. It looked fun. Yum. Dave called it a fake apple. He goes, this is a, this is a dessert. It's a fake apple. <laughs> Which <laughs> just sounds like a guy who's just given up at that point. Oh, yeah. He's like, uh, um, okay, well, this is just a fake apple. You should apple. have called it Adam's apple. Oh. Ah! Oh, Dave's or apple. Or Dave's apple, yeah. yeah. Uh, whatever. He was like, it's a fake apple, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> or, Nata- Natasha hates me, whatever. So I think banged up apple might be a little better. Banged up apple. Yeah. It's just because like it looked good. Why I say banged up? Because I've seen desserts like this that were perfectly shaped as an apple that you couldn't even tell it apart. Yeah. You could tell this one apart. You could tell it's a, that's a little banged up apple. Yeah. Maybe that's why he says fake apple. But he said, yeah. Call it like a faux apple or something. Like elevated a little bit. Yeah. Or call, call it a chuckle apple. Ah. ah. Ganache apple. Gan apple. Oh, it's got to be a better name for it. Not an apple. Not an apple. Mm-hmm. It's fun. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Yeah. You're anyway. welcome, Dave. Anyway, my other note was just like, yeah, we haven't seen a ton of food this season. No. And we talked about it before, but. Did we? Yes, that he's not really putting up a lot of courses. No, no. I want to see you cook. I he's, know. He's too busy trying to win back Natasha. Yeah. Or as I said, because the episodes are getting long, maybe they just, or there is enough drama. They don't need to fill it with food. I don't need to see them dance at the club for five minutes. I'd rather take two of those minutes and show me what you're cooking. Yeah, we'll see. Maybe, maybe we'll, but apparently... Everyone's loving Dave's cuisine, so he must be doing something. Well, he does right? looks good. He just he's yeah. quality, not quantity, I guess. True. And then we learned something that makes sense. Apparently, Natasha was engaged before to someone she worked with. Mm-hmm. It didn't work out. They broke up while crossing from one sea to another or one country to another. Mm-hmm. But they still had to share a bank. The room. So she also must seem like it's a theme for her. So was this not the ex? No. I was just assuming this was the ex. I don't oh. think so. Well, I don't think so because they have a- any, she, she, she's not calling him her ex-fiance because that's what you would call it if you were engaged to someone and you broke up. Her ex, whoever this current ex is, is very serious. It was a serious relationship. They had a house together, a dog. Yeah, that's a- why I don't think they worked together. Hmm. Interesting. Either way. Yeah, but it's, it's almost like... A, an occurring theme for her, like meeting someone on the boat. It's not working out. Uh, okay, but uh, you still have to be around them. Yeah. Moving on. Yeah. You think she'd learn her lesson, but. Well, she did not. She's not. So then we get the Studio 50 snore. It was basically <laughs> a few people sitting around the table with yes. bottles of water. But the guests are loving it. Yeah. 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 I wasn't. Yeah. No, me neither. Nothing happened, right? No, they go to bed. Natalia and Storm, they sneak away for a what little What are partay. those seats? They were cool, right? Yeah, but what are those? I don't know. Never seen them before. Me neither. What are they for? For asking your love out on a date. Oh, date that's seats. for sure. Yeah, because that's what happened. Storm asked Natalia on a date, and I was like, oh, well, all right. Okay. Here we go. Stepping Just up. Just the two of them. Oh, there we go. They can make it if they try. Yeah. So the next morning, we see the crew snap into action. And this was sad to me. You tell me how you feel, but Jason trying to bond with Z and oh Courtney. Oh my gosh! But it's just his jokes aren't landing. He's trying to he's trying to double dutch his way into their little banter. No she's one's falling, laughing. She's falling and flat. Courtney's like, I literally have no idea what he's saying. Well, it's tough because I don't know if Jason how aware he is of it, but they want to bang Z and Courtney. There's sexual yeah. tension. If there's sexual tension. You're not going to be the knife, Jason, and get in there and cut it. Yeah, because then Jason's like. Z laughs at everything that Courtney says. Because he wants to bang her. Yes. But Jason is like, I'm just trying to fit in. Yeah, that's why I feel bad. Yeah. Because he is a little bit of that outcast. But we s- we'll we see probably something on the next episode that we see or some previews that he's going to lose his shit a little bit. Oh, I missed that. Well, in the, previews, the previews. In the previews, he basically tells Storm to fuck off. Storm mm. was his boss. And he... Mm. He told this to Reagan before. Mm, but yes. yeah, and Storm's going to be like, what the fuck? MZ and Courtney will be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he said that. A little drama. It's it's interesting because the person who Jason could have a chance of befriending would be Dave. 
but they already have bad blood. Yeah. Like that first, because think about it. You have Z and Storm who are buddies. Yeah. But then also now each of them have a lady. Yeah. And so there's no way Jason's getting involved there. Dave, well, Kyle has Natalia. Yeah. And Natasha. Dave would be Jason's guy, but he kind of burned that yeah. bridge early on. So Jason is a man on an island right now. He's- I was saying that he could be friends with Storm, but I don't think it's going to happen. But Storm now has Natalia yeah. and Storm has Z. Well, has Natalia for now. Right, but also has Z. His, his best yeah. friend is on board. So that's a hard relationship to break. That's probably a harder relationship to break into. Two best friends versus Z and Courtney. It's probably easier to get into yeah. that one. But either way, kind of feel bad for Jason. So... Next morning, the guests wake up. They're looking a bit mangled. They had, I guess, Studio 50 snore was the, the, a yeah, lot for them. Yeah, but they, they look happy. We see Kyle looking happy. He said, yes. two teeth are out. Teeth pain. No more. And no more pain. So he's back. He feels so much better. And then we see the guests are leaving, saying goodbye. They loved it. Exceeded their expectations. Yes. And the primary, Christina, hands over the tips, a mm-hmm. fat envelope. A fat, fat Envelope's a good boat name. Yeah. I like Fat Envelope. And okay, yeah, I like how Kyle made it back right in time for the tip meeting. Mm-hmm. But they sit down. Sandy gives everyone kudos. Job well done. It's great to have Courtney, she says. And Storm, you accepted a challenge that you were ready. No, you said you, were, you wanted a challenge. Yeah. And you accepted it. And I have to be honest, I was worried when I came off the dock. But last night, what you did was phenomenal. Well done. Uh, hold on. And the, the tip, tip is 20000 US dollars, which means 1800 a person. Not bad. Not bad for freaking two days or not three days. Not bad for days. two days of work. And the guests were not too dramatic, mm-hmm. not too needy, right? So, so nice, nice tip. And then we see Dave and Natasha alone in the galley. Yeah. So, and she's telling Dave about her ex and they're talking again. This was, oh, if I, if I felt bad for Jason a minute ago, I kind of started to feel bad for Dave here. Well, yeah, because not, yes and no. I don't know why she told him. Because if you're just talking to your ex, like you don't tell Dave. Or because you know it's gonna, you're going out tonight. He's gonna get out of control. But if you want to say it because you're getting back with your ex and you want it to be clear, there's no chance of us here. That's fine. Say that. But she was like, "So I'm talking to my ex again." And look, Dave, we have dogs together. We have a house. We have friends. We make each other laugh. It's like, whoa, okay, enough. Yeah. You could have stopped that. We have dogs together. <laughs> like, we, he really gets me. He makes me laugh. We have the best sex of our lives. Like, enough is enough. Okay, keep twisting yes. that knife, Natasha. That's exactly what you're doing. Yes. And then she's like, you know, my problem is I just run away from problems. Which uh, is, which is. But why? True in why a did sense. she say that? Like, because she's avoiding. She's avoiding. The problem that is Dave, in a sense, she's she. There was no clear communication. Yeah. She she gave him the silent treatment. That's what caused Dave to spiral out of control in the first place. Was that she couldn't just sit down and tell him, "Hey, it's not working. I got I got back in touch with my ex. I think that's progressing." She runs away from it. She avoids yeah. the conflict, which a lot of us do, which isn't always the best way to handle things. And nope. so now she's in this predicament. At least she's having a conversation with Dave. I think she actually went too far this time. Yes. But then Dave talks to the camera and he's like, who the fuck is she doing? Like, that doesn't make any sense. After all, she told me right. how he cheated on her. Oh. And I'm like, Dave, dude, I know it sucks. It's tough because you have to be around her, but move try on. to move on. Move try on. Try to move on. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's got to be incredibly tough. To right. be on that boat. But. I get it, but you're also an adult. Like, be I an know, adult, but, uh, but come on. Haven't you ever had your heart broken, Teresa? I guess I did, yeah. My high school boyfriend cheated on me. Yeah. But. Imagine if you were locked in a room with that person no. after he did that. Hell no. Exactly. It's got to be tough. Yes. So then everyone's getting ready to go out, and then we see Storm and Natalia. Hello, new couple going alert. on the day. Well, new couple alert for couple. about... The next two or three hours. So they're at this restaurant. They're just the two table for two. Another mm-hmm. another great boat name. Table for two. And 
N- Natalia turns it into more of a job interview, which I didn't yeah. like. Yeah. Right. And she she gets upset at Storm for talking about the job, but she turns this into a job interview. She's like, "Have you ever hooked up with a crew member?" He says, "No." Do you buy that? No. No. I. But at the same time, maybe because I think he's very focused. I think he's never dated a crew member, mm. but hooked up. Yeah. Oh, okay. he's made out or banged a crew member. I would imagine. Yeah. I would. I just. Yeah. I, you know. I know a little bit about yachties now, and I yeah. would imagine. Then she asks, what's the weirdest pet name someone's given you? And he goes, Daddy, which apparently his friends call him, Ew. which makes it a very weird. Very weird. If my buddies called me Daddy. Yeah, no. That would I would have a lot cause, of questions. Cause for concern. And then they start talking about work, right? Which is a bit of a turnoff for Natalia. But it's okay. It's okay because if you're going to be in a couple, if you're if you're going to have a relationship... Work is a large part of your life. You need to talk about it with someone and you're going to talk about it with your partner. Yeah, I talk about my work with you all the time, more than you probably want to hear. Uh, okay, but especially in this circumstance where Storm just got this promotion. Yeah, that's he's, what I'm talking about. He's excited, but he's stressed and like, yeah. come on. I get that you're off the boat and you want to break away and talk about pet names and whatnot, but... If this is what's on his mind, be a good partner and let him talk about what's on his mind. Yes, I agree. Yeah, I didn't get that. So then while they're at dinner, the rest of the crew, they head to their dinner. Nothing happens. Eventually Storm and Natalia meet up with them and they head to a club. Yes, classic. They, they don't party on the boat. Like, not at all. Not at all. Sandy runs a tight ship. I think so. Yeah, because sailing yacht, every night they left the restaurant, went back to the boat. And went yeah, nuts. it was always a mess. In the hot tub, yeah. popping champagne, peeing off the sides. You're right. They go straight to the yeah. club and then go back to the boat and sleep. Yeah. But so they get to the club. Oh, Dave is just shooting daggers at Natasha the entire time. Mm-hmm. It's, and that's what bothers me. I don't care if you're still in love. That's your feelings. It's hard to get over. I don't care if you tell one or two people. I get it. You want to talk about it. But the creep factor that yes. Dave is putting out. And then she's like flirting with Z a little bit or like dancing. And yeah. they, Dave turns to Storm. He's like telling him about like, oh, I can't believe it. she's back with her ex. She's, and now yeah. she's dancing. She's here in Z. Like, well, what is she me. doing? And I'm like, oh boy. Yeah. Oh, I, I was expecting him to go crazy again. <sighs> so yeah, Dave can't drop the Natasha conversation. Storm, he can't drop the work conversation. Yeah. And this is wearing on Natalia. Yeah, but he's not even talking to her about it. He's talking no. to Z saying, oh, you know, like, I I hope I'm doing a great job. And Z is like, yes, you're doing an amazing job. You're a great bosun. And he's like, you all the responsibilities. And Natasha is like, just stop talking about work. And I'm like, I don't get it because if you don't want to talk about it and he does, he's not talking to you. He's talking to Z. So you have fun, girlfriend. You know what? And this just hit me. What? Maybe. Storm Storm is stressed about his new role, but he's also excited. Yes. He's happy. He's doing a good job. He's getting recognized for it. He's happy. Think about last episode. Think about this episode with Natalia and Kyle. She's not very happy at work. Yeah. So maybe she doesn't want to hear someone who's so happy at work. We've all been there, right? You're not having a great day. You're not having a great week. You don't like your job. And someone else is talking about how much they love their job. Yeah. You're like, enough is enough. Maybe that's what Natalia is dealing with. She's, she, okay, I, I, I get it. You're excited. You got a promotion, blah, blah, blah. Maybe. I don't want to hear about it because I'm miserable at Possibly. work right Possibly, okay. Otherwise, yeah, I don't get it. If you actually have feelings for this guy, be there to talk about yeah. things with him. Anyway, they all go back to the boat. It's like 2 a.m. They get back there. And this is, again, where I saw Dave just staring at Natasha. He's standing in his doorway, mm-hmm. staring at her. It's so, it's off-putting. It's very un- unsettling. Yeah. A little creep. And Storm starts to spiral a little bit because he's seeing the way Natalia is pulling away from him. Mm-hmm. And did you see her like run into the guest room? Yeah, which I don't get because I she- I don't get that at all. She's in the, she shares the bank. Is it the bank room? Bunk. The bunk room? Some, some nights it's a bang room, but <laughs> it's always a bunk room. She shares her bunk room with Courtney. Yeah. I didn't, whether she shared it with Storm or Courtney or whoever, 
I don't understand why she was fleeing like she was in in, in danger. Like, yeah. I got when Natasha no, nah, ran yeah, yeah, yeah. because Dave was a threat, yes. for lack of a better word. Natalia needs to communicate. Yes. If she's upset with Storm, then communicate. Otherwise, we're going to have Dave and Natasha 2.0 because the whole reason that argument started was lack of communication and Dave thinking, oh, what's happening? Why isn't she talking to me? Yes. So what Storm is sitting there, I think he's a little drunk and telling Jason, like, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know what I did. And Natalia just like walks past him and that's all. Like, that. Like, luckily, no drama, right? And then we see Dave getting up his bed just saying, fuck Natasha, fuck this, yeah. fuck that, I'm over. I'm like, oh boy. <sighs> oh boy, dude, you have not learned. I mean, you are calmer, but Jason's bit. there. And I think Jason does not want to hear all this shit. No, no. But that's where it ends. That's where it ends. Until next time, which next episode looks juicy. Juicy. Yeah. But I thought this was a good episode. It was a lot was happening, a lot yeah. of different things. Everyone had their own little issues, mm-hmm. their own little storylines. I thought it was good. It was entertaining. This episode flew by for yeah. me. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, tomorrow night is the night. I was going to say tonight is the night. I wish. Tomorrow Tom- night. Tomorrow night is the night, the Patreon Zoom happy hour. If you are a patron, we hope to see you there. If you are not a patron and you want to join the happy hour, sign up. It's not too late. Patreon.com slash Married to Reality. Either way, follow us on Instagram at Married to Reality Pod. And make sure you follow the podcast so no matter what we drop, when we drop it, it'll come straight to your device. It's so easy to do. You look down, you smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hard as hopefully the next episode. Woo! Because it looks, it looks, a looks little, dramatic. It looks a little too it looks hot. dramatic. A little too hot if you know what I'm saying. There's oh, something. yeah. And the guests. Let's not forget the guests on oh, the next boy. episode because... Is Kyle going to get a little too close? Because that's what Natasha says. He might lose his job. Oh, we don't don't want that. All right. Well, that's for next week. That's for another time. Thank you guys for listening. Patrons, we'll see you tomorrow night. And that's it. I've said it all. I've said it all. You've said it all. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.